Update, brought to you by Simcox Advocates, advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit simcox.com or call 690 300. Manx Radio's Update with Andy Wint. Fast away, good evening. It's half past five, this is Update for Wednesday, 13th of September 2023 from Manx Radio. 30 minutes to look at the latest news on the Isle of Man. Background to that news for sport and business and sea watch and travel updates. And the newsmakers in person this evening, still time to avoid the strike, says the Director of Nursing. What'll be new at the government conference next week? Airport parking is down £130,000. Did you know the post office prints hospital letters? And should American bully XLs be banned here? Man Benham, for all your business and legal needs. First of all, at 29 minutes ahead of 6 o'clock, the update news headlines. Faster my Christian Jones. Faster my. The Isle of Man Medical Society says it stands in solidarity with nurses who are expected to strike tomorrow. Meanwhile, Manx Care's Executive Director of Nursing is calling for independent arbitration to break the deadlock between the Royal College of Nursing and resolve the dispute. Income Act, the airport car park over the last 12 months was £130,000 lower than prior to COVID. New figures published show just over £660,000 has been spent on parking at Ronalds Way since charges were reintroduced in May last year. And TT rider Mike Brown has parted ways with the Burroughs Engineering RK Racing Team. The team initially agreed a deal with Brown for 2024, but upon reflection it's been decided to end the partnership. In international news, Sarah Sharif's father, stepmother and uncle are on a flight back to the UK. The 10-year-old girl was found dead in her home in Woking over a month ago. Her family are understood to have flown out to Pakistan the day before her body was discovered. The UK Prime Minister is urging the leader of North Korea not to sell weapons to Russia. Rishi Sunak's direct message to Kim Jong-un comes after he promised his unconditional support for Vladimir Putin. And officials in Libya are worried about the number of people who've been killed by flooding in the northeastern city of Derna will keep rising. A storm on Sunday led to flooding and two dams being breached. Those are the update news headlines next at 6. Man Benham. Contact us by phone, video call, email or face-to-face. We're happy to connect with you. Manx Radio Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. Goramayad, thank you, Christian, from the Ronalds Way Met Office. There is a strong wind warning out in the North Irish Sea. States of sea is moderate or rough and becoming slight later. The weather, cloudy with rain on the strong southerly, turning westerly and easing as the rain clears. Overnight minimum 13 degrees. And for Jordan, sunny spells tomorrow in a fresh to strong south southwesterly, decreasing through the morning. Daylight maximum 17, rain returning tomorrow night down to 13 into Friday. And for Jahenya, a wet day in light breezes at first, strengthening from the north or northeast. Top temperature 18 Celsius. Tides on the way out, low water in a little less than 20 minutes' time. Sunset 19 minutes before 8 tonight. The late high tide 13 minutes to midnight. Low tide 25 past 6 tomorrow morning. And the sun rises at 11 minutes to 7. Manx Glass and Glazing can produce bespoke splashbacks for your kitchen in any colours. Speak to the team on 674 573. There's still time to avoid nurses striking tomorrow, according to the Isle of Man's Executive Director of Nursing. Talks between the Union, the Royal College of Nursing, and Manx Care over pay and working conditions are said to be in deadlock. But Paul Moore speaking on Manx Radio, alongside Treasury Minister Dr Alex Allenson. I am deeply conflicted by this issue, as I've said. I support my colleagues for a better pay deal. But I cannot stand by silent, knowing that the actions of the Royal College of Nursing and many of my colleagues will manifestly lead to serious harm for people who are in need. And we have to stop that. I am calling on the Royal College of Nursing to cancel their planned strike action. Stop exposing vulnerable people to harm by striking. I'm also calling on Manx Care and the Royal College of Nursing to negotiate. There's still time. 
go to binding arbitration so that this can be resolved one way or the other and maintain care for those that are in need. Our priority right now is to care for those in need. In terms of just the, the pay issues around nurses, we're talking millions of pounds. In terms of the long-term structural issues, in, in terms of health and social care funding, we're talking about tens of millions of pounds. And that's at a time when obviously government costs and, and the cost of, of energy has gone up. So it is a, a, a really tight balance to, to get that right. In the February budget, um, I announced that we would draw drawing down over £150 million from reserves for this year just to manage to sorry, increase spending, especially in health and social care and education, um, to, because those were seen as key priorities, but also in terms of looking at how we deal with some of the issues around housing, some of the issues around transport to and from the island that nurses have told me are real barriers for recruitment and retention of staff. At the government conference next week, the Enterprise Minister is set to give an update on progress with economic strategy for the Isle of Man. Well, we've heard the headlines before about growing the population and the number of jobs, so what's new? Lewis Foster from Manx Radio News asked the Minister, Tim Johnston, MHK. At this stage, what I'll be doing is I'll be giving a broad um, update on where, where we stand. We've set ourselves some ambitious targets within the economic strategy. The department's got some, obviously, targets on jobs and jobs creation and we're, what we're trying to take the economy. So it's an opportunity for me to give an update on that and, and just talk broadly about some of the challenges, which, you know, which is it is very difficult at the moment. We, you know, the economy is in a, in a, in a it's a challenging time. It's a challenging time globally. That sort of obviously we haven't got a great deal of control over that. But it also means then we also need to double down on on the challenges that we've got and making sure we, we're we're taking things forward as best we can. It's it makes it harder, but we still need to be showing progress. So it's not just about population growth. No, it's not. And I think you know clearly what that's one of the big um, signs from from the uh, economic strategy. That's a, but that's a fifteen a fifteen year period of looking at sort of 5,000 more people working in the economy but we also need to make sure that we've got the infrastructure in place we can support that we've got the training and the skills in place so it's a broad it's a broad area DfE are very much part of that but it's it's, it's also well beyond my department so again it'll be an opportunity for people to question people from other departments on a broader scale where we're all linked into the same challenges really and you were saying the Chamber of Commerce are due to attend we've heard from them before saying red tape is currently hindering business growth on the island is that some feedback that you're going to take into account and address absolutely i mean i think that's where you know we work we work closely with the chamber of commerce they have representation on some of our agencies so you know it's really important that we get we take that feedback from from business from the real world if you like and make sure we're, we're acting on it so yeah and i know that i know that um they've been asking some of those questions and through through my department and through treasury and elsewhere that we'll be looking to to, to answer some of those questions and, and and try and provide a you know i think a very positive update of where, where we are with the economic strategy Update brought to you by Simcox Advocates. Last of my 22 minutes before six, income at the airport car park over the last 12 months was more than £130,000 lower than prior to COVID. Figures published in response to a Freedom of Information request from Manx Radio show over £660,000 has been spent on parking at Ronaldsway since charges were introduced in May of last year. Here's Sean Cowper. Issues with barriers at the car parks along with travel restrictions during COVID-19 impacted the airport's revenue between March 2020 and May last year when the Department of Infrastructure introduced the Ring Go app. Between May and the end of 2022, £297,866 was spent on parking charges at the site with £363,871 paid so far this year up to the end of August. For the 12-month period from September last year to August 2023, passengers spent £552,000 2060 pounds and 40 pence for the same months in 2018 and 2019 the figure stood at 682,413 statistics previously released by the department for the period prior to covid show the car park had raised more than 600,000 pounds per year between 2017 and 2019 meanwhile the number of people parking at the airport has grown compared to last year between june and august last year 
year, 4,824 parking sessions were booked at Ronalds Way, increasing to 6,494 over the same three-month period this year. A total of 2,070 parking penalty notices have been issued since May last year. Following an attack in the UK, there are calls for a breed of dog, the American bully XL, to be banned. But some are saying it's time for irresponsible breeders and irresponsible owners to be held accountable, not the pets themselves. Here's animal psychologist and founder of Animals in Distress Isle of Man, Anita Williams. The percentage of the Manx dog owners on this island are fantastic compared to the UK. Majorly fantastic. You do have a percentage. I mean, I'll give you an example. Four years ago, we rescued three XL bullies from a house that the police had asked us to take away. And they belonged to a lad that ended up in prison for drug use. And he kept them in his home because he was a supplier. Those dogs were the most sweetest, gentlest animals you could ever meet. They didn't have a bad bone in their body. They We handled them. They lived with us. We had them to the vets for all the problems that they had due to his neglect of them. But other than that, he just neglected them, but he didn't have the sense to know what to do with these dogs or cage them in his kitchen, living in two inches of feces and covered in urine and he just kept him in there to stop people coming in and taking his drugs again it's not the breed it's the specific owner and dog and that's what everyone agrees with it's the owner i would never let my albus out in the in the public i'd never take him the beach i'd never take him anywhere he goes to an enclosed field where no one else is allowed to go in there bar me and him that is me protecting him Sea Watch with the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company. Not a vessel Manxman left Hesham at 22 minutes past two. She'll be into the bay fairly shortly and onto the link span before six o'clock ish. Evening departure, of course, is Ben McCree leaving Douglas at 8.15, arriving in Hesham just before midnight. The overnight departure, 2.15 from the Ben, back to Douglas at around six. Nam and Nenon left early this afternoon. And consequently, having left early, was coming back early. She left Liverpool at six minutes to five o'clock and will be back taking it slow back uh, this evening at about half past eight. Tomorrow morning's departure, just one. Manxman departs 8.45 from Douglas to Hesham. Like the Steam Packet on Facebook for the latest sailing information. A Port St Mary man's been jailed for 18 weeks after sending his friend an extremely distasteful message about his 10-year-old daughter. Tessa Hawley. Aidan Christopher Bainton of Victoria Road sent the text about the 10-year-old just after 3am on the 5th of August. Part of it read, I love your daughter. She makes me feel orgasmic. I can't wait until she's 16. The man reported the 31-year-old to the police and Bainton later admitted to sending an offence indecent or menacing message. During sentencing at Douglas Courthouse, the prosecutor told the court this is a rather disturbing offence. Bainton's advocate told the court his client had an unenviable record and was currently subject to a probation order imposed in February for abusing the 999 system by making nuisance calls. He said the probation service was still prepared to work with him, despite Bainton's probation officer describing him as being all talk and no action. Urging the Deputy High Bailiff to continue his probation order despite acknowledging he'd breached almost everything going, he said it could act as a sword of Damocles. Describing the message as extremely distasteful, Rachel Braidwood told Bainton this was a nasty, disgusting message which will have caused real distress to her father, adding that it was clear he had no motivation to engage with probation or accept support and no real commitment to change. She sentenced him to 10 weeks in custody. She also revoked his previous probation order and resentenced him to eight weeks in custody for that offence, telling him this was an appalling message to send to anyone. You should be thoroughly ashamed of yourself. Manx Radio Business Briefing. At 16 minutes before six, UK house builder Red Rose said it expected profits and revenue to halve next year as the housing market laboured amid high borrowing and challenging conditions, with the company's weekly sales slumping over the summer. And Aviva gained after agreeing to sell 
its 25.9% stake in Singapore Life Holdings, SingLife, together with the two debt instruments to Sumitomo Life for 800 million sterling in cash. And for a full daily market report, go to RamseyCrookall.com. Well, how about this for the end of an era? Apple's confirmed its new iPhone won't feature its lightning charging port after the EU forced the change. Apple said the iPhone 15, unveiled at its annual event on Tuesday, would use the USB-C cable as the universally accepted standard. A new Apple Watch series was also unveiled with a more advanced chip. Apple released a USB-C to lightning port adapter, just £29 to purchase, thus connecting the lightning port accessory users that they've built up over the years to its new USB-C enabled iPhones or iPads. The latest iPhone handset, which goes on sale next week, is the first since 2012 to feature an alternative charging port. The Stock Market Report, brought to you by Ramsey Crookall. UK and European stock markets retreated today as investors reacted to stronger than US inflation data. Gold steadied after retreating immediately following data showing an acceleration in US consumer prices. Oil traded higher and the pound hit a three-month low sliding after data showed that the UK economy shrank more than expected in July. The numbers from Ramsey Crookall at the close in London the FTSE 100 down fractionally two hundredths of a percent at 7,525. The DAX in Frankfurt down uh, almost a third of a percent at 15,665. The Dow Jones Industrial up two tenths of a percent at 34,717 in New York. The Nasdaq Tech Stocks Index up six tenths of a percent at 15,382. And the S&P 500 in the Midwest up a third of a percent at 4,476. In the exchange market, it's the British pound sterling trading at one US dollar, 24.8 cents, one euro, 16.3 cents and 23 South African rand, 57 cents. In commodities, gold's down just over a tenth of a percent, nearly two tenths of a percent now, $1,909 per troy ounce. And a barrel of Brent crude's up four tenths of a percent at $92.27.5 cents. You've got an investment plan? Yeah, Mike set it up. But don't you need loads of money to do that? Not this one. It's called Cheerwater from Ramsey Crookall and you pay in monthly as little as £100 so it's like saving regularly really helping us invest in the future for a house of the kids education £100 a month I could easily do that you should the sooner you start the better invest in your future with as little as £100 a month Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall, the island's investment specialist for 75 years. Call 717171 or visit ramseycrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. A Moran commissioner says residents on the Isle of Man should have been consulted about Manx Care's trial to have the Isle of Man post office print hospital letters. Here's our local democracy reporter, Emma Draper. Concerns have been raised by a local commissioner about a new plan for the post office to take over the printing of hospital appointment letters. The orthopaedic department will be starting a trial run of the service at the end of this month. Moran Commissioner Alison Lynch says she's concerned that her constituents may have their GDPR breached. What I just find very strange is that there's been no public consultation about this. This was the first I knew about it when I read it on the Max Radio website. You know, suddenly the medical appointments are going to be sent out by Isle of Man Post Office, printed, enveloped and sent out by Isle of Man Post Office. A big concern of mine, not just as a commissioner and for the people living in Moran, but, you know, myself and the wider population of the Isle of Man, is is there a GDPR implication to all this? And what about patient confidentiality? I know it's only a medical appointment, but there's information on there, for example, what clinic you're attending, and your hospital number. I've encouraged them to contact their MHK, the data protection officer also, just to put their feelings forward. At Manx Care's public board meeting, the Director of Operations, Oliver Radford, said the trial has been introduced because of a high number of did not attends. There is a a correlation between our longest waiting lists and our DNA rates. So we've realised that 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 is most likely linked to our current administrative processes. So we are pushing forward with our... um, uh, changes to the essentially the, the letters that we, we send out. Manx Care has been contacted for comment. Update brought to you by Simcox Advocates, advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit simcox.com or call 690 300.
Manx Radio Sport. Fast am I, Darren Timson and first sports editor Rob Pritchard. Fast am I, good evening. Starting in motorsport and TT rider Mike Brown has parted ways with the Boroughs Engineering RK Racing team. The team has announced having initially agreed a deal with Brown for 2024. Upon reflection, it's been decided to end the partnership. The outfit adds it's grateful for Brown's efforts for them and are wishing him well with his future venture. 2023 saw Brown claim his first ever TT podium with the team when he took second place in the Super Twin TT Race 1. In cycling, Manxman Tyler Hane has been competing in the Grand Prix de Wallonie in Belgium for the San Pran team today. In a high calibre race with some of the world's top teams involved, Hane's squad couldn't quite get any of their members into the top 10 spots. However, it'll be valuable experience for Hane and his teammates, with San Pran themselves describing this event as the most prestigious one-day race they've ever competed in. In football, the latest campaigns for the Isle of Man Under 18s League will get underway this evening. For the 23-24 season, the league itself has grown to include nine teams, compared to seven in 22-23. Two opening day fixtures are scheduled for tonight at the Bowling Douglas. The newly formed Colby All-Stars will face Braddon at 8pm, whilst Russian United take on Ramsey before then at 6.15. Last season saw Onken claim the league title after a 2-0 playoff final win over Union Mills on the 1st of March this year. And FC Alaman has confirmed there will be further changes to its fixtures next month and in December. The Ravens away tie within short FC on Saturday, 28th of October, which was previously scheduled to kick off at 3pm, will now get on the way at the slightly earlier time of 2pm. Elsewhere, the Manx side's home clash against Bursko on the 30th of December, which has been due to start at 3pm, will now kick off at the later time of 6pm. <laughs> Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Inbound at Ronaldsway, the 6.30 EasyJet from Belfast International is on time. The 10 to 8 Logan Air from London City on time. 20 past 8 Logan Air returning patient transfer from Liverpool is on time. And the 25 to 9 EasyJet from Gatwick currently showing on time. Outbound, the 6.25 Logan Air to Liverpool on time. 7 o'clock EasyJet to Belfast International on time. And the 5 past 9 EasyJet return to Gatwick on time. Newcastle Town Road's closed between Spring Valley Roundabout till, well, no later than the end of October, fingers crossed before then. Uh, Spring Valley Roundabout to the bottom of Richmond Hill, they're resurfacing. The junction at the bottom of Richmond Hill has been reopened, traffic diverted along the Energy from Waste Plant access road to the top of Kewag Hill. Temporary lights in Port Erin on Upper Prom for resurfacing and lights too between Ballacrane and Bullock Bridge in St John's. Lights too on the main road through Kirk Michael for work on the road surface. In Ramsey, lights on West Quay for emergency work on the Harbour Wharf. The Balagorn Road's closed for ditching works near Balabeg. Temporary lights back on Victoria Road near the Falconcliffe Terrace Junction in Douglas for water main work. Falconcliffe Terrace is also closed. Hillside Avenue closed for adjacent office window replacement till the middle of June next year. Mona Drive's closed between Empire Drive and Victoria Road for sewer lining works. And that work's got underway finally at Ballabrui Drive. It's closed between Devonshire Road and Ballabrui Way for gas main work. h and Motorcycles.im for all your motorcycle requirements. Southgate Industrial Estate, opposite Keith side tyres. Call 665646. Psychology graduates are being offered an opportunity to have their educational and child psychologist qualification paid for. One person will be fully funded by the Department of Education, Sport and Culture to get it, as Amy Griffith reports. The applied doctorate in educational psychology will require them to study full-time at Nottingham University for one year. They'll then split the next two years between their studies and working with young people in Manx schools. It's described by lead educational and child psychologist Johnny Fee as a rare and exciting opportunity. He adds that working with young people is a privilege and is urging psychology graduates to find out more. Education Minister Julie Edge says it's a phenomenal chance to be supported to complete all the necessary qualifications while being able to practice in a cluster of Manx schools. The department is also introducing a series of monthly forums led by Mr Fee, hoping to give the potential candidates the best possible chance when submitting their applications, which will be submitted in March next year. The first forum will be held at University College Isle of Man on Monday the 18th of September at 430 to find out more about the course or how to attend the forum, head to our website, manxradio.com. It's hoped Hospice Isle of Man's new flagship store in Douglas will help the charity become 
more self-sufficient. It opens in Duke Street later this month from the charity Michael Taylor and Kathy Foley. So the hope is very much so that the Duke Street will be our flagship store going forward. It's important to us and for the customers, I think, that is differentiation between the, the various shops. So in simple terms, Duke Street will be your flagship store. Strand Street will be our boutique store, offering a highlight items and a couple of upcycling ranges. And our Bucks Road will be our discount store. We have now already recruited four brand new volunteers that haven't volunteered for us before. And we've had two or three of our original volunteers come forward to come work into the shop. And we have recruited a full-time member of staff and a part-time member of staff. And they're due to start next Wednesday. We're hoping that this will make a significant contribution to the bottom line. And so much so, like I said, we have a variety of sources. We have a lot of support from the Great Manx public range, from events, donations, legacies, tearing up to events at all, all hours of the day at the weekends. But I think the people would like us to be also doing the best we can ourselves to make money as well for ourselves, to increase our level of self-sufficiency. Like I said, we have a great relationship with Manx Kirk, who have been supporting us in the last year or so. And again, but it's incumbent, I think, on the hospice retail, hospice subsidiary to, to do its best to raise as much money as it can to, to recycle or to reinvest straight back into the hospice for the benefit as well. This Saturday is World Cleanup Day and on the Isle of Man, Plastic Busters and Beach Buddies are inviting you to be part of a grand cleanup on the Isle and Beach Buddies founder Bill Dale says the event isn't just about cleaning the Isle of Man but making a statement against global littering. It is human beings who are responsible for this mess, right? You know, we could, we could easily say, oh, it's the government's fault there not picking it up or it's the local authority or it's the town council that is absolutely 100 percent wrong it is human beings who are causing this problem and we have to think about our own collective responsibility and our individual responsibility and we should not throw rubbish in the street end of story that is the simple message otherwise we're just going to end up being like lots of other countries around the world and polluting the oceans Obviously, we, we clean beaches a lot, but what we're trying to do very much so is, is to make people so much aware that the rubbish that's just dropped in the street doesn't just get picked up by somebody who's paid to do it. You know, it doesn't always work that way. And this is where it all starts. If you drop a piece of rubbish in the street, it goes down the drain in the river and out to sea. And the great thing about that is that, and, and what we're going to do on Saturday, is that we pick the rubbish up before it gets into the drainage system. So, you know, this is like a preventative mes uh, measure. And that's the message that we try to get over to schools where, where we go all the time talking to schools is, this is the way to stop it. It is a good thing to go and pick it up on the beach, but that's the final act, really, what we're trying to do is to encourage children and then they'll go home and educate the parents so that, that this is not the way to act as a responsible human being. So don't drop rubbish in the street. That's it for update tonight. Compiled from the resources of Manx Radio's news department. Thanks to newsreader Christian Jones, producer Beth Espy. After the news, the arts programme Spotlight with Howie Kane, the greatest hits with Chris Kinley at 6.30 and I'm back tomorrow at 5.30. W-I-N-T